there uh, get some family up in Tennessee. And, uh, and of course, you know that those that are sick, and we miss those, and they'll be back. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And as one Down Syndrome girl said, she was a sweetheart, said, Thank you, Jesus, lemon pie. So every now and then I'll sing, Thank you, Jesus, lemon pie, in honor of her. And uh, she was one that if you put the Bible up there and you, and you left, when you went back and you had it open, it's not open. She wouldn't have <coughs> the Bible open. She would shut it for you. So she was sitting there on the right right uh, side of the church there. And she added a lot of color to the church service. Mom and Dad was pastor and husband. He was a pastor. And she was uh, about like she was like a pastor, too. Let's stand together. Lord is good, and we thank the Lord. Let's just lift up those people who are in, in your heart and mind. You know they need help. It's, and it's good to see Aiden, the handsome dude back there. Aiden, it's so good to see you. Smile. You, you really got a good smile, son. Yeah. yeah you probably married a preacher's wife or something. <laughs> you can tell. Yeah, well, if he, gets, if he becomes a preacher, he'll have to. No, I'm talking about a preacher's wife. He, he'll, he'll preach, and then he'll get a wife. That's what I'm saying. You know, that could happen, right, Aiden? Yeah, and you kind of almost halfway believe it, so. But lift your hand up, say, so praise the Lord anyhow. The day the Lord's made, we'll be glad and rejoice in Him. God is good to us, and God has good things for us. And so we're just going to go ahead and, and have some songs here. And so we'll start out with you, Miss Debbie. Are you up to it? Yeah. I'll bet you can pull it through. Somebody say, we'll pull you through, Sister Debbie. Yeah. yeah. Then Brother Lee's going to follow. Okay. Change. 
when he's walking to and fro. windows of my soul Love storms raging all around I know I stand on solid ground He was so rejected and abused chapter Romans, they, had, they were living in the same world we're living in now. Uh, so he makes this statement. He said, don't owe any man anything in verse 8, uh, but to love one another. For he that loveth another fulfills the law. He says, learn to do that. And then uh, the scriptures 8, owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. They didn't seem to know that. Thou shalt not bear false witness, they didn't seem to know you weren't supposed to lie. Thou shalt not covet, they didn't know. They did, that was a part of their life. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's a biggie. Somebody say, that's a biggie. That's in the top two. And love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And, that, and this is the key scripture. 
And that knowing the time, and that's the word, that knowing the time, that now it is high time. And he's saying this is a special chunk of time that you got. And there's, and there's a word for that. There's a word for, called the rhema word. Now, the rhema word fits in with the chunk of time, the kairos. The word, there's two words for time. One of them is a word for chronological time. And the one that we're talking about now is the word that is a set, space, place, season. You could call it a season of time. Something special, something is being birthed in that season. That's also mentioned in the fourth chapter of the book of Galatians. That in the in the in the right, the fullness of time that Jesus came. Paul makes a statement. Tidy him what's stated in the uh, in the Chronicles of the Life of Christ. So there's there is time, and then there's a word for the time. There's a time and a word for the time. And this kind of time is what you would call pregnant time. This is a time of great quality and value. Something special is going on. And, and so we have seasons that especially note the season you got saved. That's a, that was a, a moment for you. And, and for me, I remember... I told you the story about him being in Bible college, and the Lord spoke to me through the second chapter of the book of Ezekiel. It says, Stand on thy feet, son of man, and I'll speak to thee. That was a kairos time. That is a set time. That was a, a, a midget or a, a particular part of time. So we're talking about a, a set particular time, like high noon. This is high time. This is the time. To, to connect with that which is a great value. He said, y'all are, are sleeping in darkness. You're sleeping your life away. Well, when, they're, when you're sinning, you're sleeping your life, life away because you're sleeping in darkness. You're not seeing the truth and following through the truth. So he said, you need, you need to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, what he said. In other words, you need to put on the light. You need to wrap yourself in the garment of praise. You need to wrap yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to wrap up. You need to shine. You need to shine. In other words... We are light bearers who shine. We, we have a battery in the Holy Spirit and we can flip a switch and we can shine with love and life and truth and grace. He said, you need to light up. The night's far spent. The day is at hand. Let's quit the darkness stuff. Let's not live a life without value or purpose or commitment. Or following the Lord, or loving the Lord more than ever before, we need to love the Lord and follow follow the Lord. Said so you don't need to be doing the same old stuff you've been doing. He said it's it's time. It's hard to make changes. Sometimes the changes are not some, from some particular sin. It's just a being lack of days of toil. It's easy to get lack when you get older, and you know. And I'm not there. Thank God. Y'all tell me if you're older, uh, what it's like to be out there and be older. The doctor said I didn't look like I was 74, but I paid him extra money. But said, put, I put it paid more than 20. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and don't make provision for the flesh. Said, do not do that because you are to be light. It's due season to the right, it is the right time, and now you've got the right word. That this is already said, this is the right time for me to tell you the right word. You remember the time you got the right, it was the right time for you, and you remember you had the right word that moved you. In your life and covered you, gave you a word of protection. When you were reading the Bible, the Bible jumped out at you. That's the that's the that's the word that we're talking about, the rhema word. It covers a particular time in your life. It shows up at the right time for you. How many times can you say that God has shown the right time for you with the right word? When were you at church or were you listening on the radio, the right song, and it was the right time for you, and it was the right word for you. And that's the, what the preaching is. The gospel is the right word at the right time. Paul said to this Romans, I'm sure when I come to you, I'm coming with the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you the rhema word, the fullness of it, and I'm going to do it at the right time. I'm coming and you're going to get it and you're going to be different. Somebody say amen, amen. and praise the Lord. That's an attitude word. One of the great sayings that, uh, what, what time, how much time have I got, brother? Okay. See that? I'm almost done. I'm going to shut him down. He's not going to be able to win anything on me. I promise you that. That's right. No, but it's a great book called, uh, it's written by a gentleman uh, uh, concerning, let's see, I put word it down. I know what it is. 
But in, the, in this word, he writes these words in this powerful. He said, the grand essentials of life are something to do, something to love, and something to hope for. That this makes up life. Something to do, something to love, and something to hope for. And, and the meaning is that our life is to be full. And the book is my utmost for his highness. My utmost for his highness. You may have wrote, uh, read that devotional book. They rearranged it some so you can understand it better. It's a Scottish Baptist in the late 1800s who wrote it. He was a, a holiness preacher. And he wrote this book and this statement that's, that's classic. The grand essentials, say, but the grand essentials of life or something to do, or something to do, something to love, something to love, something to hope for, something to hope for. And now is the time to do it. And now is the time. It's to It's the do right it. word, right word, at the right time, at the right time. And this preacher's done. And he's done. Say, oh Lord, I almost had a shelf with Ron. Almost got there for shout. It almost kind of. <laughs> Amen. So I'm just kind of setting my sister up. And, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll finish this up next Sunday. I need a little more time on it. Spend a lot of time on this particular subject of the kingdom. And Pastor the Lord says as well. But right now we've got a group coming to sing for us that we love. And I, I owe you a key. Come on up here, brother and sister. Jessica and Joshua and Jenilyn. Pardon? Oswald Chambers, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, he, he died at 43. He died at 43, a young man, at 19 and 17. We could get used to this, you know. Could we get used to this? Amen! Woo! All right, and, and you know how to fix it. I'm going I'm to go down and let you do it.
for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. And let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day, a beautiful day you've given to us, Lord. You woke us up this morning. You, we're in our right minds. You've given us mobility of our bodies. And Lord, you are surely in this place today as we call upon your name, as we worship, as we give you praise, as we give you thanksgiving, because we owe it all to you. And Father, we just want you to, to look down today and, and I know, Holy Spirit, you can go and do what we cannot do, but we have church members that are not doing well. We have Brother James and Wonder Lord. We have Blue and Diane that are out today, God. And there's many on the hearts, Debbie, you know what she shared, what she shared in our Sunday school class, and Ron with his relatives, and there's Cheryl and God, Pastor Ben's daughter, that needs a touch from you. There's many others, many, God, that names that I don't even know, but you know the hearts because you know every person that's in here. There's Sister Diane, Lord, Diana, God. She needs a touch from you, and my brother, he needs a touch from you, God. And you are such a merciful, gracious God that all we have to do is call upon your name just as we will see in this book of Joshua. When he called upon you, Lord, you answered, and you answered in a mighty way. So we exalt you, and we give you praise, and we give you thanks. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Miss Hayden, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Miss Hayden's going to play something. Thank you. 
time is now. The clock of the kingdom. And when God says something, he means it and he is going to do it. And he told Joshua, every piece of land that you put your foot on, your feet on, your foot on, I'm going to give it to you. Now, now that's amazing. Yeah. Isn't that amazing that if God told you that, what would you do? Would you get out and go to walking? <laughs> or would you just sit there? Because when God's in God's kingdom and his clock, when he tells you to do something, he has got it already prepared. Everything prepared for you to do it. Now, if you wait, you're going to miss it. If you wait, you go into missing. So he told Joshua, okay, Joshua, the time has come. The time has come to do it. And I just believe and trust God that when he says do it, do it. You don't have to ponder it. Don't be like me. Well, wonder what's, why, when, and how. Just go on and do it. Just go on and do it because his time, his clock is perfect. His timing is right. So I want you to turn. Now, we've just read where God tells Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, it's time for you to go in and take the land that I have promised to the Israelites. And I don't see where, Joe, where Joshua hesitated. It may be, but I don't see where he hesitated, Brother Gregory. I think Joshua was different. He had a different personality than Moses. So God uses different personalities at different times. Moses was more humble. Moses was not a warrior. But uh, if you look, look in the Bible and you see all the land that, that Joshua conquered, you would say Moses conquered some land with the Israelites. He fought some battle, but not nearly as many as Joshua did. So now I turn to uh, Joshua, the 10th chapter. Turn to Joshua, the 10th chapter. After now, Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had captured and completely destroyed Ai and killed his king, just as he had destroyed the town of Jericho and killed his king. He also learned that the Gibeonites had made peace with Israel and were now their allies. He and his people became very afraid when they heard of all of this because Gideon was a large town, as large as the royal city and larger than Ai, and the Gibeonite men were strong warriors. Now let me give you a little background history of these Gibeonites. The Gibeonites were some people that was in that land too, and they were supposed to be destroyed. But they got smart and outsmarted Joshua and the Israelites. Because if you read back in chapter nine, and I'm not gonna take the time to read all that, we're gonna stay in chapter 10, but uh, if, you like, if, if you like stories and history, read this, just read the whole book of Joshua. And, and you, to me, I mean, when I read it, I, I guess I got some warrior in me somewhere, because I love the battles. I love when David was going out and destroying. I love that. I love reading about that. So, but the Gibeonites, they heard about Joshua. Because Joshua had destroyed uh, Jericho. And you know, they, all they did was march around. And God took care of the people in Jericho. So Joshua, these people heard that and they were afraid. So when the Gibeonites got small and came up with a scheme, now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go over to the Israelites and we're going to take some old, old bread, put on old, old clothes and tell them that we from way off and we're going to make get them to make a covenant with us. We're going to get them to make a covenant with us so that they won't kill us out. Now the Bible said there was a large town there was a big city, a big country. So guess what? Although they were big, they were afraid of God. And you know what? 
Rahab told the spy, we done heard about you. We done heard that you wiped out this nation and that and what you've done. So we are afraid. So she too, Rahab, that's in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, she protected those spies. And God let her live because they made a, a covenant or, or an agreement with her. But the Gibeonites, they did the same thing. And Joshua, without consulting God, made an agreement, a covenant with those people. And if you think that God does not honor covenants, now these are not, no, nowhere in the Bible does it tell us that these are God that people are like the Israelites. They're probably uh, idol worshippers too. But when they came to know God, God flipped the switch on them. Because they had to serve the Israelites. So I'm sure that they saw how the Israelites act. They saw them worshiping their God. They saw their beliefs and how they practice all of that. So hopefully, and I do believe that it was. Maybe not, but I believe that it was because if you read in 2 Samuel, and write this down to 2 Samuel, Chapter 21, when David was king, do you know a curse came upon Israel because Saul tried to kill these people out? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Second Samuel, let me make sure I got that right. Because I've got it written in here. <clears throat> yeah. Second Samuel, chapter 21. And I read a little bit of this. There was a famine during David's reign that lasted for three years. So David asked the Lord about it. And the Lord said, the famine has come because Saul and his family are guilty of murder, murdering the Gibeonites. Now, Joshua made this covenant with these people. And Samuel is going to go against God's wishes and try to kill these folks out. So God had a problem with and sent a famine on Israel. And Brother Gregory, that's back to some of that oppression you was talking about this morning. See, God, when he, if we make an agreement or a covenant with somebody, in God's name, it's staying. Because Joshua, when he found out the truth, what these people had done, he wanted to deal with them, but God says no. And he said, we can't do anything because we made a covenant an agreement with them in the name of our God. So he couldn't do anything. So here we see in this chapter, these other kings, they're mad because the Gibeonites are protected by Israel. Now, you've got, and I'm going to read verse 3. So Adonai Zedek of Jerusalem sent messages to several other kings, Hoam of Hebel, Piram of Jormo, Jephra of Lachish, the Burr of Eglon. Come and help me destroy Gideon, he urged them, for they have made peace with Joshua and the people of Israel. So these five Amorite kings combined their armies for a united attack. They moved all their troops into place and attacked Gideon. The men of Gideon quickly, verse 6, the man of Gibeon quickly sent messengers to Joshua at his camp in Gilgal. Don't abandon your servants now. They pleaded, come at once, save us, help us. For all the Amorite kings who live in the hill country have joined forces to attack us. So Joshua and his entire army, including his best warriors, left Gilgal, Gilgal and set out to Gibeon. Do not be afraid of them, the Lord said to Joshua. For I will give you victory over them. Not a single one of them will be able to stand up to you. So, Gibeon, these other nations got mad with the Gibeonites because they had made an agreement with Joshua and they decided, well, we'll go and kill you. We'll get rid of you. But because of the Israelites, because of God's people, they said that these people were smart, those Gibeonites. They may have, they probably was ungodly -god folks. They probably were idol worshippers, I would imagine. Don't you think so, Brother Gregory? They were uh, idol worshippers.
But if you want, if you want to know about God, He'll make a way for you. So these idol worshippers, they became water barriers and wood carriers for the Israelites. And now they need some help. They need some protection. And they were, from what the scripture said, they were a large nation. So uh, why weren't they fighting for themselves? But they called for the Israelites. And Joshua said, okay. And God tells him, go ahead and help them. Because what you see, they won't be able to stand up against you. Now God had already told Joshua, the time, the time is now to take over. To take this land. And we don't see what Joshua is hesitating either with this when these people came. Verse 9, Joshua traveled all night from Gilgal and took the Amorites army by surprise. We discussed that this morning in Sunday school. Because with Abram, he attacked at night. So when I see something repeatedly in the Bible at night, at night, at night, at night, that tells me at night is important. We like to do everything in the daytime, but sometimes God wants you to do it at night. Prayer. When you wake up at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 2 o'clock, whatever time of night, that's the time to pray. Don't wait till well. You know how we be sometimes. I don't want to get up, Lord. I'm going to be awake all day, all night. But he's telling you, now is the time to fight the battle. The battle needs to be fought when God says, fight the battle now. Don't wait till the daytime. Because when the daylight hits, guess what? The phone's going to start ringing. You've got to do this. You're going to get all of these distractions and disruptions. But at night, when there's nobody up but you and the Lord, he is, his, he is wide open. That's, that's your time. Amen. So don't wait till in the morning to pray. Set you a time at night. And especially if God wake you up, that's when you pray. But so at night, they attacked him. And good look, the Lord threw them into a panic and the Israelites slaughtered a great number of them at Gibeon. Then the Israelites chased the enemy along the road to Beth Horah, killing them all along the way to the Asagon and Makeda. As the Amorites retreated down the road from Beth Horah, the Lord destroyed them with a terrible hailstorm from heaven that continued until they reached Asagon. See, I mean, God told Joshua, get up, go fight, and God fought the battle for them. Number one, he threw those people in confusion. They were so confused, they were probably running to each other and fighting against each other. But that was God fighting for Israel. Because he told Israel, you told Joshua, you go and you take the, you take the land. Now remember, there's five kings he is fighting against. And he told Joshua, not a single one of them will be able to stand up to you. See, that's what God tells us. Do it now. Pray now. Or uh, if God tells you to go and do something, do it then. Because everything is in place for you to be successful. If he tells you, now go and, and, and uh, if you need something, I, I used Miss David that's sitting back there. She was telling me this week, she has been working to get this house for a year. And she's been told by the end of this month, and this was the month that she started last year. Yes, there had been some bumps in the road, but guess what? God smoothed those bumps out. He smoothed them out. So when God tells us to do something, do it. Do it. You say, well, do I need courage? But most people do something afraid. Because when God tells you to do something, it's not going to make no sense, I'm telling you. It's not going to make sense at Amen. all. But Amen. because God said it, do it. Amen. Do it. So God fought them from heaven with a hailstone. Now there is no way in the world for Joshua to fight with hail. 
But God did. God did. Yeah. And the Bible says, the hell killed more of the enemies than the Israelite killed with the sword. Now, isn't that great when you don't have to fight so much that you're worn out? Because God doing it for you. So that's what he did for the Israelite. On the day the Lord gave the Israelite victory over the Amorites, Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel. He said, let the sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of Ajalon. Joshua prayed, y'all. Joshua prayed and asked God, Lord, let the moon and the sun stand still. Two times in the Bible when God messed with the clock. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, God got a clock too. The kingdom has a clock. Yeah. And I want to be on the kingdom's clock. Yeah. I don't want to be on the Lord's clock because I'm slow. I'm slowing down, folks. I feel like I'm slowing down. But I want to be on the kingdom's clock. Yeah. Yeah. Day, that when God says do Let's get it done. And I, I'm like that anyway. I, like I said, I think that warrior me when if God says let something need to be done, I can't stand dragging folk. I can't. I don't like it. I don't like it. And I like to hang around with people who got some get up and go, some pep in their step. Because I don't like that dragging. Uh-uh. I can't take it. So here's God. And here's Joshua. God's fighting that battle. Joshua had said, Lord, let the sun stand still and the moon over the valley of Agilon. You see that right here where God messes with the clock? Yeah. Also in Chronicles and chapter 20, when Hezekiah was sick and dying, he said, well, Lord, God said, what sign do you want me to give you? You want the clock to move forward? Or do you want it to move 10 degrees? Or you want it to move backwards 10 degrees? Hezekiah said, Lord, it's easy for it to move forward. But you move it backward. So that's two times the clock was on. That God messed with the clock. Yeah. And do you know they said some years, I heard this years and years, even in our time, somebody said, well, our clocks, the time is off 30 minutes. And somebody that knew God says, well, let me tell you, in Joshua's day, God moved the clock back 20 minutes so that Joshua could complete this battle. So the sun stand, stood still, verse 13, and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemy. If you have asked God, I have. I said, Lord, just hold the clock. Just stop it for a few minutes. I'm running late. I got to get somewhere. I got to do something. And I prayed that prayer. I don't know whether it stood still or stopped or what, but I was able to get there on time and trying not to speed. So, uh, so God went answer the prayer, and he answered Joshua's prayer. And the sun stood still until they defeated their enemy. Amen. And praise be to God. What a good God that we have. That he would hear the prayers and the cries of his children. So if he would do this for Joshua, now this is impossible. Amen. What about the prayer that you got? What about your prayer that you have been praying and asking God to do something? And it's impossible. Sometimes we, our prayers are too small. But when God says, get up and move and go, that's when you need to run like a horse at a racetrack. Don't be so like the turtle. The turtle has his purpose too. And sometimes we need to be like a turtle. But when God says, get up and go and run, we need to run. Because that's what Joshua did. Because the timing was right. It was God's clock. That was his word. And his clock is perfect. It's never too late and it's never too fast. If you're on God's clock, you're on the right time and be at the right place because God is just that good to us. And this says, 
So the sun stood still and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its, its enemy. And this is this event not recorded in the book of Jesha. The sun stayed in the middle of the sky and it did not set as on a normal day. There has never been a day like this one before or since when the Lord answered such a prayer. Surely the Lord fought for Israel that day. Then Joshua and the Israelites returned to their camp at Gilgal. Because Joshua was right on time. He was on the kingdom's clock and God took care of business. So we praise God. Get on God's clock. Don't get on your own. Because your clock may mess you up. You know, I, I hate, I, I don't like it in, in, in Greek. We use the word shoulda, coulda, woulda. That was a, that's not a good word. Those are not good words. I shoulda, I coulda. I would have. You on your own clock when you're doing that. Yeah. But praise be to God that he is such a good God and victory belongs to God. Victory belongs to him and Joshua and the Israelites saved and took care of God. God took care of those five kings for the Israelites. Because he's a, such a good God and his timing was perfect for the people to do what he needed them to do. So praise be to God. And remember this week, get on the kingdom's clock. Get on the kingdom's clock. And whatever God's telling you to do that you know you need to do, just do it. Do it. Because God has given you the power and the authority to do it. And we praise God for it. Yes. Miss Hayden, do you have another song? If not, that's fine. Well, I enjoyed that. How about you? Amen. Amen. Well, that, was, that was great. Great study that on the clock. Appreciate it so much. Pastor Lord is always a good, especially the Old Testament, but anywhere sharing the word of God. Amen again. Amen. amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And again, Aiden, it's good to see you. You'll share me some of that hair. I'll give you some money. <laughs> now, now, but I don't know if black wouldn't go with this, but there is color and I could work with, I guess. Oh, we can make it work. <laughs> All right. I know you could. Can you stand with me? It's, it's a wonderful season. Yes, summertime is coming on us and some good things are coming up. And uh, we, we had a wonderful camp meeting, and there's more to come in the weeks to come of things that God's going to do in your life and in my life. Uh, he started something. He started something a while back here, and it's going to it's going to be realized. It's not just an idea or a feeling. It's what God is doing. I've been in this business a long time, the kingdom business. And and I, I've seen a time when it looked like nothing was going to work. And then as God said he would do, he did it. And everything turned around. Everything turned around. If you're faithful and you keep the faith, you're going to get there. Amen. Amen. In spite of uh, uh, our lack of understanding and, and doing, God is faithful to what he's going to do. In spite of our, well, he takes, the, he takes those crazy sheep all the way to the, to heaven itself, it says. They go the wrong way a hundred times. A hundred times a day they would if you let them. But God was faithful. His grace was sufficient. And you're going to get there by that grace and by His grace. Can you lift your hands and say, praise the Lord for the mercy of God. The mercies that are new every morning. I mean a big bag of mercies are showing up at our door every morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. It's not an old grace. It's a new grace all the time. Grace upon grace. Favor upon favor. Faithfulness upon faithfulness. You are that kind of God. It's a sure deal with you. It's a sure thing. You never drop what you're holding. You never forget what you're thinking. You're always there on time, in time, through time. You mag You are magnified. You are glorified. We are trusting you and not the clock. You are the God who's able and available and is leading us in a way of righteousness and in a way of truth and a way of peace 
and a way of success, not only a spiritual success, but mental and emotional success and financial success. What we need, our needs are supplied by you continually. You give us our daily bread with a bunch of crumbs left over. Thank you, Father, for all you do and all you are. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Yeah. I heard about his groaning and his precious blood's atoning. And I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. And some